Kunja Bihari Jai Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadari Yasoda Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Vardhari Bhagiri Vardhari Yasoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya How do you do the L thing? Oh, you don't have it up there. I forgot. How does that thing work on the L? On the top of an L you got a triple thing? You know, I'm sure. When you have an L and you got those two lines up top, or a dot, what is it? How do you pronounce that? Like it's Pumal. On the, the first word Pumal, there's two little things on top of the L. You know, there's a, lo- a thing like that and then a dot. You know how to pronounce that? Pumal. How do you, what is the, it doesn't have this on this one. Oh yeah, maybe it does. Oh, here it is. Let me just check here real quick because I want to get this right. I wasn't expecting this L thing. Um, I don't see it listed. Anyways, uh, oh here it is maybe. Like re, oh it's an R. It doesn't have the L. Okay, we're just going to have to do it with ignorantly. Pumala betanati vali atmanam. I'm sorry. Pumala betani teve lamatmana. Prasida totyanta samam svatasvayam. Yanitya sambanda niseva yatata. Param kima trasta mukam havir bujam. Pumala betani nati vela matmana. Prasida totyanta samam svatasvayam. Yanitya sambanda niseva yatata. Param kimatrasti mukam havir pajam. Go for it. 
Umala Veta Nite Vela Matmana Puman, a person, a beta, can achieve anati velam without delay, atmana, of his soul, prasiddhata, being satisfied, atyanta, the greatest, samam, peace, svata, automatically, svayam, personally, yet, whose nitya, regular, sambandha, relationship, nishevaya, by dint of service, tata, after that, param, superior, kim, what, atra, here, asti, there is, mukam, happiness, havi, clarified butter, bujam, those who drink. <clears throat> By regular service to the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas, one can clear the dirt from his heart and thus enjoy supreme peace and liberation from material attachment and be satisfied. In this world, there is no fruitive activity superior to serving the Brahmana class. For this can bring pleasure to the demigods for whom the many sacrifices are recommended purport. In Bhagavad Gita 265 it is said, Prasadi Sarva Dukhanam Hanir Asyopajayate. Unless one is self satisfied, he cannot be free from miserable conditions of material existence. Wow. Let's all repeat that. Unless one is self-satisfied, he cannot be free from the miserable conditions of material existence. Therefore, it is essential to render service to the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas to achieve the perfection of self-satisfaction. Srila Naratam Das Thakur therefore says, Tandera charna sevi bhakti saneva sujaname janame hai e abhilas. Birth after birth, I desire to serve the lotus feet of the acharyas and live in a society of devotees. A spiritual atmosphere can be maintained only by living in a society of devotees and by serving the orders of the acharyas. The spiritual master is the best brahmana. At present, in the age of Kali, it is very difficult to render service to the Brahmana Kula or the Brahmana class. The difficulty, according to the Varaha Purana, is that demons taking advantage of Kali Yuga have taken birth in Brahmana families. Arakshasha Kalim Asritya Jayante Brahma Yonishu, Varaha Purana. In other words, in the this age there are many so-called caste brahmanas and caste goswamis who, taking advantage of the shastra and of the innocence of the people in general, claim to be brahmanas and vaishnavas by hereditary right. One will not derive any benefit by rendering service to such false brahmana kulas. One must therefore take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and his associates and should also render service to them. For such activity will greatly help the neophyte in attaining <coughs> full satisfaction. <coughs> this has been very clearly explained by Sridhar Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his explanation of the verse 
Vyavasa Yatmika Budir Ekeha Kuru Nandana. Bhagavad Gita 2.41. By actually following the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, as recommended by Srila Naratam Das Thakur, one can very quickly come to the transcendental platform of liberation. As explained in this verse, Atyanta Shamam. By actually following the regular principles of Bhakti Yoga as recommended by Srila Naratam Das Thakur, one can very quickly come to the transcendental platform of liberation as explained in this verse. Hey, Hare Krishna, thank you for blessing us with your presence. Hare Krishna. The particular use of the word anativelam, without delay, is very significant. Because simply by serving Brahmanas and Vaishnavas, one can get liberation. There is no need to undergo severe penances and austerities. The vivid example of this is Narada Muni himself. In his previous birth, he was simply a maidservant's son. But he got the opportunity to serve exalted Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. And thus in his next life, he not only became liberated, but because became famous as the supreme spiritual master of the entire Vaishnava disciple succession. <laughs> According to the Vedic system, therefore it is customarily recommended that after performing a ritualistic ceremony, one should feed the Brahmanas. Om Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare By regular service to the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas one can clear the dirt from his heart and thus enjoy supreme peace and liberation from material attachment and be satisfied. In this world there is no fruit of activity superior to serving the Brahmana class. For this can bring, ple can bring pleasure to the demigods for whom the many sacrifices are recommended. <coughs> so here we see the power of serving the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. Um, Narada Muni, a nice example. And we can even just look at our own lives, you know. I don't know about you, but him and I, about a few years back, you know, we weren't, you should see his, is it your license, driver's license? No, you showed me a picture. You just look at a picture of him about 10 years ago. And it's like, you could, you could make a million devotees just by having a billboard up and saying before, after, join the Hare Krishnas. Seriously. I mean, I was worse. And um, that's like, it's really profound, actually, if you think about it. I don't know how, how where you were at. Maybe you were a really good boy and so forth and so on. I don't know. But I doubt it. Most of us, right? And Kali Yuga are really way off. Really, really messed up. But yeah. well, maybe you got devotee family, so forth and so on. Anyway, it's, it's prof beyond profound, actually, how far we've advanced in Krishna consciousness. Um, and just by serving the devotees. And this is this, it's proof that it works, right in itself. You get immediate pleasure. You can, oh, what is that verse? Um, uh, 12187? Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Uh, anyways, and what he uses is, Iha yasya harer dasya karmana manasa gila nikilas vivavasta su jivan mukta su ujate. Anybody with his mind, words, and actions engages only in the service of the Lord is considered a liberated soul under all. Uh, conditions, even if he may appear to be in a condition of material existence. I mean, really, you get free. And here, here, but it's not just, I remember I was distributing books uh, in Madison, Wisconsin, and, you know, this one pretty serious Christian approached, and he says, he saw me like, 
not really doing it so happily. And he made the comment, you know, it says in the Bible that if you don't joyously serve God, it doesn't count. I was like, bam. I don't know if that really is true within our, our scriptures, but it, it has at least some truth to it. Because uh, I remember going to um, my poor and seeing my guru, and he gave me the instruction, Chan Hari Krishna and be happy. I asked how I serve Chan Hari Krishna and be happy. So I did that for a year. I see him once a year for about a minute or two. And then he uh, asked me how I serve He says, Chan Hari Krishna and be happy. It's like I didn't get it. You know, I mean, this is the way I said, read it at least. It means that I really didn't get it. And it was that I said, Chan Hare Krishna, and be happy. You know, be satisfied. Become happy. And that's not an easy instruction. It's a simple instruction, actually. Chan Hare Krishna, and be happy. But that happy part um, is really important. Like here we read together. Unless one is self-satisfied, he cannot be free from the miserable conditions of material existence. So this is not no joke thing, being an Atmarama, being self-satisfied. It's, I remember distributing books really, I mean, really long hours. I w I'm a pretty horrible book distributor, honestly, and I would have to go out longer hours to be, to, to, to compete with you know some of the top guys, so they go out six hours, seven hours, and I would go out there like eleven hours. And I would, in um, I'll go to every morning program. I would miss the evening programs. I'd take a back bus back to the temple, and I did that for many days straight at the L.A. airport. I did so many hours. I was like really determined, and I, I kind of not used to sleeping so little, and constant engagement, and I, I wouldn't let my mind. Um, kicking gear, like I wouldn't, certainly would want to get up after getting home at like 11 p.m. I wouldn't want to go to the morning program. I forced myself just, just up, nope, gonna, and then once I get in the morning program, you're already engaged, and um, hearing, chanting, and then uh, the mind and body would say, ah, take a day off. I go, nope, nope, just get in that van, Sanger's on van's going to go to the airport, you know, and, and I would just try to beat my mind like that for many, 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 many days. And I got to the point where I realized, and this is my I mean, limited understanding that I have, is that we actually create our own misery. Actually, in truth, we don't suffer. And we actually want to suffer because we're envious of Krishna. Now, that's a really heavy-duty thought. And I remember having that heavy-duty realization, on some level at least, where I wanted to, to, to be the enjoyer and instead of the enjoyed. And if I, I can't do it by being successful, you know, I, I, I can't do it purely. Well, I can do it purely, but I chose, I realize I choose to suffer and thus enjoy the, quote unquote, enjoy the suffering. And think of me and mine and all that stuff. It's simply, I assume out of envy. I didn't quite recognize the envy part back then, but I'm just assuming theoretically uh, it's out of that. And I, but it was so bizarre to realize that I'm, I'm actually, I have this pattern to immediately cause suffering to myself. And that's what I, 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 I've been doing for millions of lifetimes. And it was such an intense, realization. I remember just going, oh my God. In truth, we don't suffer. There's no suffering at all. But we actually cause our own suffering. And um, so here we see that our solution, unless one is self-satisfied, he cannot be free from the miserable conditions of material existence. So actually this, this activity of chant and be happy solves our problems. We actually we actually enter into that pure state of consciousness. We, we become purely conscious in that pure conscious state. There's no, we get free from the miserable conditions of material existence. And our, our real nature is not like nothing. It's blissful, as we know. So, <clears throat> and as Prabhupada points out, writes somewhere, that by the qualities of a Vaishnava, 
the Krishna consciousness movement will spread. I said many things in the way of spreading Krishna consciousness. He said, uh, distribute these books and automatically the Krishna consciousness movement will spread. But he makes this interesting point that, uh, you know, by the qualities of a Vaishnava. So we have to do both. We want to distribute the books. We want to preach, you know, in so many different formats, maintaining a temple and Harinam and so forth. But we also need to cultivate this art of being self-satisfied, becoming a real Atmarama. I think I mentioned yesterday that if we are blissful under all circumstances, then um, you kind of win, win o not, not that you're trying to win over people, but you kind of win, their, they want to jump into your game after some point. When all they're trying to pull you, drag you down doesn't work, they, they get exhausted. They, they just end up, they just concede to the match because that's what that's the tendency is how do I bring you down how do I lord it over you right I can control you I can just bring you down I mean I've been told by my father who's read a lot of history books that um, the Christians there's this one if you go to Iceland he said he went there and there's a statue of a quote-unquote saint and what that quote-unquote saint did, he converted, I guess, the land into Christ to Christian. And what he would do is put a funnel, uh, if anybody wouldn't become a Christian, he would put a funnel in their um, mouth, metal funnel, light it, uh, put some milk in it, and then put a, hot, a viper in it. So the viper would, it would be too hot, the funnel, so it would have to go into your stomach and then eat your way out. And you would do this in public. So this is our tendency to, I mean, that's a radical example of our tendency. Um, <coughs> and it caused suffering to ourselves or others and try to lord it over this way. Look, oh, oh man, my pain of mine. I mean, if you need to do that, I understand perfectly. I do that all the time. But... Still, I'm using an example. And Avina Nirita really gave a cool statement. He says, when we go out on Sankirtan, are we sharing Krishna consciousness? Or are we sharing my pain in my knee, my suffering I have in my mind? What are we trying to spread? Are we spreading Krishna consciousness or some bodily conception to the people? And this is a really cool statement, I think. I don't Learned a lot from him. It's just, just, if, and if we go out with this mood, with this understanding of becoming an Atmarama, becoming self satisfied, and practice, learn this art of being free from our sufferings of material existence, then we'll be spreading Krishna consciousness, actually, and not our material, con uh, our, you know, material conception of things. My, my hurt shin consciousness. Excuse me, sir. Um, I'm here to give you my shin consciousness. You know, as you hand him a Bhagavad Gita. I mean, really, that's what we, what we have the tendency to do. I'll speak for myself. Maybe you don't have this tendency. So, so anyways, <coughs> and of course, we have to be careful who we serve. Um, and now, we shouldn't go too far with this because I've noticed... No, I don't want to comment to whatever. I've just noticed that within this, maybe it's everywhere, but it, no, maybe I shouldn't make this statement, but I'll just make it anyways. I've noticed that Southern California seems to attract or create personalities, and not everybody here for sure. I mean, it's wonderful Vaishnavas here, but I've met a lot of people that come from this area that have like, serious, unnecessary doubts in the process and in the, in the authorities, in all honesty. I, I, I don't see any validity to it. It seems like highly unnecessary, just, just doubting for the sake of doubting, to lord it over, I would imagine. But you know, maybe there's something to it that I'm completely unaware of, but I, I, I think we have to be really careful in this regard. That 
you know, here it's stating that this is how we become an Atmarama, how we become so beyond advanced like Narada Muni is by serving these spiritual authorities. And so that's this process that Krishna is set up to do. So having doubts with them and thinking poorly of them, seeing, creating faults or, you know, maybe some people do have faults and it, it just looking at only those instead of the good. And um, it's going to really just do the exact opposite. Like we hear the story of Madhavendapuri when he was his last days, Isvara Puri is cleaning up his stool. And he got, he gave him some Madhavana Puri, he got the blessings of having Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as his disciple. Not to mention the ecstatic love of God also. Right? And um, Ramachandra Puri, is that his name? Ramachandra Puri did just the opposite. He offended Madhavendra Puri and he became a fault finder, a great fault finder and missed out on love of God. So here we see um, the differences in the mentality. If we can, the results of the differences of both mentalities here in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, um, what is it? What's 9-3? Dharmasya uh, Ashrada dana purusha dharma sya siparantapa prapyam nivartante mrityu samsara vartmani, something like that. That for the doubting soul, one who does not, doesn't have faith in this devotional service, he cannot attain me. And he, 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 uh, he thus ends with, he has simply repeated birth and death. And then we have Bhagavad Gita 1623. Yeah, yeah, Shastra Vidhi Sanvitam Kama Vrasati With him, yeah. So there you have uh, one who has n for the one who has no faith, he attains neither perfection nor happiness, nor the supreme destination. Right? Something like that. Was it? In a while. He who disregards scriptural injunctions and acts whimsically, he attains neither perfection nor uh, the supreme destination or happiness, right? Something like that. So that's, uh, that's the situation. So doubting, you know, unnecessarily is very, very offensive if we think about it. It's like, it's, it's the ultimate disrespect. Right? How many Christians have you, I don't know, fanatic religious people have we met that just go, oh, that's not God, that that's book's not, that's from the devil, or something like that, right? It's just so offensive. They don't, they, without re disrespect, what does respect mean? It means to re, re, spect, spect, see, re, see, re, see the situation. Open the eyes, open the mind, see what's really going on here. Look at it accurately, right? That's really... You know, what, largely what Krishna consciousness is all about, to decipher between illusion and reality. How do we do that? By studying under the spiritual master, by following his instructions. We can see the difference between spirit and reality. We can get out of illusion, see things as they are. This is respectful. And disrespect is just the opposite. Oh, no, I'm not going to give this a second look. I'm not going to give this a second chance. It's this way, I know it is, and that's final. And this is offensive. Look, that Swami has a freckle on his cheek. I know he's like, I know, no, no, I'm not going to give. They're just closing the door to mercy for ourselves. And not only for ourselves, because whatever mercy you get, you can give to others. You know, it's like a, 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 the Ganges River flowing, you know. If you don't get purified, how can you help purify others? If you don't have a realization, how can you give, impart that realization to others? So we have to not just superficially take to this Krishna consciousness, but really apply the teachings as they are in, in toto, as Prabhupada says, completely, 
And then we get the complete result. We can literally experience self-satisfaction. I remember m m distributing those books, like I mentioned, that time at the LA airport for hours and hours and hours. And finally, I was just like, I'm so sick of my mind. I can't take it anymore. I, do, I want to experience, I want to break through. I, do, I want to transcend this mind. And it just got so, such a desire that um, I got in a full lotus position in Joppa time and I refused to move from that position until I really, really broke out of this cons mental constructions of things. And I have <laughs> varicose veins from that one day on my shin right here. It was so painful, but I said, I don't care. I I'd rather die. I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> and I guess Krishna just went, look, you know, kind of like, what was it, Vritrasura, cutting himself up, and asking for a benediction. Shiva finally said, hey, hey, chill out, chill out. And it was something like that. And Krishna gave me an experience where I realized, you know, wow, there's another world out there. And thank God I got free. And then it's just, you know, it's, it's so this program, as my point is, it works. And we can experience and live in that, the, the real dimension. And we can experience that at every moment. And that's our choice. And we, anybody can do it. And anybody can do it any time. It's just a matter of desire. And Krishna will reciprocate. And so knowing this, we can then, we should strive for this. And also become aware of when we don't strive for it, being acutely aware of what we're doing, we're actually committing offenses. We're actually striving for it to the best of our ability. There's no offenses. It's just like somebody dirty in the shower. It's, 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 it's cool, okay. Uh, you're cool as long as you're in the shower, as long as you're really trying to clean yourself. Even though you're dirty, you're fine. You, there's, there's, no real, there's, there's no real offenses. It's just like, you know, you're not going to get any, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, I guess subtly can be experienced expensive, but you're not held accountable for them in a sense. I mean, you are getting, anyways, it's not totally purified, but uh, you're still a pure devotee in the Lord's mind. And that's most glorious. You're doing the best you can. That's, you're going to get the full mercy. So you get free from your mind. It's just like riding a bike up a hill, let's say. If you don't, if you if you're conscientious of getting to the top, you have to put in effort. You have to put in consistent effort. But if you go too slow, you're just going to fall over, or you're going to you're going to you're going to crash into somebody else, or whatever else, or hurt yourself. But if you're constantly endeavoring properly in Krishna consciousness, you know to you know steady like this, then the mind doesn't kick in in this negative way. Also, uh, Brigupati and many others told me, and I, I realized it to be true too, that if you are constantly complimenting devotees out there while distributing books, your mind doesn't get uh, turned uh, offensive, like you don't start criticizing them in your mind or verbally. And uh, that's so nice. So similarly, when we're constantly taken to this process of Krishna consciousness steadily, and then we don't, the mind doesn't. The mind is the devil's workshop, Prabhu says, and the mind doesn't kick in to to just. It becomes your your friend, or at least he's neutral. The mind. I don't know if it's a he or she. But of, course, yeah, of course, it. It's a material thing. So, um. So, this is how we can actually c control our mind, and be free from this tendency to, from envy, to be, be like to enjoy our suffering. Because that's all we can get. <laughs> we can't enjoy real happiness. It's just all suffering, actually. Even your so-called happiness is, is suffering. So um, when when we don't serve Krishna consciously and to the best of our ability, then we can enter into a, the pure state of consciousness, live in samadhi, and that's available again for everybody at any time. And it's an art. We just have to apply it appropriately, and we get the result. For the doubt, what is that? For the doubting soul, what is that? For it's also, I think, somewhere in chapter four, right? For the doubting soul, Bhagavad Gita. 
um, talks about the benefits of knowledge, and but for the downing soul, he, he basically suffers. So, um, so when we have, a, a, when we do have a doubt in the mind, then I'll back up a little bit. Somebody said, I'm trying to think who says, one of these famous uh, wise people in the past said, uh, a, a contemplative life or an introspective life, something like that, is not worth living. So actually becoming aware of the psychic movements of the mind. And, and then when we have a doubt, okay, maybe we think this or that, that leaves us to believe that maybe we can't apply the process of Krishna consciousness. We have to create some, I don't know, altered situation. Then we should write it down on a piece of paper <coughs> and rather than run with it. Because in the mind, you can kind of justify it. Yeah, you just have this fuzzy, weird thing. But when you put it on paper, you realize, hmm, this, this doesn't add up. Now, I don't mean... You know, sometimes you you do need a certain Prabhupada uh, certainly sanctioned unique situations for people. So I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about when you can't apply the basics of Krishna consciousness. You know, when you don't have faith in your guru and things of this nature, you know, you don't have faith in the holy name, you maybe don't have faith in the Shastra or something along these lines that will actually completely derail you from your Krishna consciousness. Write it on a piece of paper and uh, you can't even finish the sentences. You can't. And then you end up throwing a piece of paper away and they go, okay, I guess I was wrong. Right? And if you actually have something, present it to your author somebody that you trust as a real, you know, a real authority and see if you, you can actually, if he agrees. And if he, he does, okay, then we make, it, make amendments. Otherwise, we just continue to apply. Because uh, um, this doubting program really leads to this lack of satisfaction. Um, and without the la with a lack of satisfaction, we remain on this, you know, this material plane, where there's suffering and so forth and so on. Hmm? There we go. Right. Thank you. No happiness. So miserable. I'm miserable. Why am I miserable? Really, the only reason why people are miserable is because they want to be God. That's it. There's no other reason. And we can be miserable because we want the fallen souls delivered. But that's not, you're still blissful. And you're concerned. And you really want them delivered. And in that way you experience pain. But that's not the same misery as like, you know. You're still Atmarama, you're self-satisfied. Just as Krishna is self-satisfied, but he does have a pinprick in his foot and that's the, you know, a whole bunch of jivas down here. So here we have this complete opportunity to really transcend and go back home to Godhead by applying this with faith. Full faith. One does not have faith in the holy name, right? It's one of the ten offenses, right? Complete faith in the holy name. Complete faith in the process. And, and if we apply it, we really conquer the mind. It's so cool. It's actually the most... It's the greatest gift Christian can give us is these ten fences. Because, I mean, these, these, this knowledge of these ten fences. Because we, it, it checkmates us to Krishna Prema. So, I'll stop there. Any comments or questions? Yes. I was wondering if you can uh, help us out. You know, sometimes, like, not sometimes, a lot of the times, you know, these da people that doubt authorities or they leave the movement and then they start blaspheming the authorities of the movement. Mm -hmm. And even they make up things or they exaggerate. Mm -hmm. um, and even we can hear it about our own guru. Like you see something on the internet or something or, or you even hear some devotees talking. And, and so I was wondering how can we be of... Uh, I guess, like, protected from that, even if we're exposed to it unwillingly. Like, I've even had cases, like, in L.A., I'm taking prasadam at the Sunday feast, 
with another devotee and all of a sudden like a Prabhupada disciple mm -hmm. that kind of you know mm -hmm. has his own opinion on things mm -hmm. just comes up sits next to us and just starts preaching to us about like Ritvik stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. and it's like you can't really I mean you can get up and walk away of course but it's already entered the ears at least yeah so, so I, I, I think he gave hints at what to do is you, you just walk away and I don't care who it is if it's an ex-guru in our movement, I still walk away. That's the best thing for them anyways. The, the, worst, the worst pain you can experience, I think, for your false ego is when nobody pays attention to you, right? <laughs> when nobody pays attention to you, you kind of get introspective, like what the heck is going on, right? You experience it on Sankirtan, you go out and distribute books, and nobody's paying it. After a while you go, what did I do? What's going on? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? And then you realize, oh, yeah. Oh, and then you resolve that, and then people start, you know, taking books. So it's the best gift we could give these people is just completely ignore them. Com don't give them the time of day. Walk away. That's the best thing, of course, for yourself. And it's a nice example, because the new bhakta that that's y you're training up, He'll learn. That's what I do, also. So for him to hear that, would be even worse. So yeah. I was also wondering, like, say you've already heard these things right, in the right, past, about and so oh, there's still right, right. maybe in in your subconscious right, right. you're thinking, oh, that's maybe it is true or something. Yeah, like that's that. another part of the question. That's good. So I address one part of it. The second part, though, is that it, let's say it already enters your ear at the moment. You know, you all of a sudden somebody just bam, and you thought he was your friend. And oh my God! So, um, you know what? What I do, what I do on a regular basis, and the way my mind works is I have to really do it on a regular basis because I'm so uh, such a nonsense rascal. Is I really have to apply the science as it is. I have to tell my mind regularly, especially with my authorities. I can think so many things. I'm, I, I mean, you know, Lord Chaitanya had trouble, uh, not trouble ever, but, you know, the students, they were a little, they were clever. They were, you know, a little smart, but they would be so smart that they corner themselves away from Krishna Prema. So I kind of have that upbringing, and I can come up with all kinds of stuff on my mind to uh, keep myself from getting the mercy. It's, it's just like knee-jerk reactions, left and right. But the way I have personally have solved the problem, um, at least to a good enough degree to where I can still get the mercy and um, apply, uh, advance nicely in Krishna consciousness, is I just go, I, when that kicks in gear, and I've, I've learned that, that I'm beginning to control the kick, the knee-jerk reaction. You know, like you just tap here and then the foot jerks up, right? After doing this enough, we can actually begin to keep that foot from moving. I mean, I haven't perfected it yet, but I see the, this, the progress. So what I do is I simply go, what does the Shastra say? What did Prabhupada say? What do the real sadhus say? They all say, I should have faith in this person. And, and this is the process, like we just read today, this is the process for me to advance in Krishna consciousness. So I'm just going to listen to this person, and I'm going to hear him, and I'm gonna, not going to let my mind kick in with all this nonsense. So I'm just going to hear this person, and, and if it adds up with what Guru Shastra and Sadhu says, then I'm going to apply it. And the result is f perfectly fabulous. I mean, perfectly fabulous. It's like, sorry, playing a roulette, or whatever, the, the slot machines, and three cherries line up every time. And you can see the result. Three cherries line up, and that slot machine just goes <laughs> You get the mercy, full mercy, just by doing this. And this is, it is, you can do this irregardless of what is in your head at this moment. Irregardless, every time. And you can see the result every time. It's a full mercy win-win program. There's no loss or diminution. It's like full on every time. And that's because it's a science. The Prabhupada says that one definition of science is you, get, you do the same uh, uh, experiment, you get the same result each time you do that same experiment. And that's exactly how it works. A hundred 
percent of the time. So knowing that, going through the intelligence rather than just the knee-jerk reaction thing, then we go, okay, I'm going to apply this science and then have full faith. Let me apply full faith, see what happens. And then you realize that this science is is a real science. It's not a pseudoscience. It's not a somebody's angle on things and kind of works here and there. No, this is Krishna's science, the supreme science. I instructed this. I'm part of this science, you know, for two ways. I think so. So, when regardless of what you have in your head, you go through this science and apply it, and you get the result. And then you, 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 very quickly realize that all that that somebody gave you in your mind is not true. I just have one more question to uh, ask about this. Like, even if you know it's not true, like logically it's not true, mm -hmm. but so many people are making a big deal out of it. So, like, I'll give an example. This is kind of embarrassing, and I hope I don't make any offenses. I wait, 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 I don't okay, I won't, I won't, I won't. It won't be offensive, but it's a real subject. Okay. And I and I would like you to elaborate on it. I love Tamal Krishna Goswami so much. We don't, I don't want to hear anything no, negative about him. Though. I'm not. Okay. Yeah. There's nothing negative to say about him because okay. he's a great soul. Okay, cool. I've read, uh, you know, he's amazing. I listen to a lot of his classes. But you know what I'm talking about? People say something that he okay. did All right. that's not true, obviously. Um, but because people make such a big deal out of it, even when I'm hearing his classes, my mind for a second will be like, what if he did do that? And then I have to correct it with my intelligence. Like, no, that's well, what, what I do, like once a year or twice a year, I go to my authority, Dhanavir Goswami, and I bring some of these into, but some things that have been like plaguing me a little bit throughout the book distribution months. And then, you know, I see myself, you know, where I get a little uh, snagged a little bit, my consciousness, and I guess slow down a little bit, you know, I don't... So then I bring up some of these things that are snagging me in my mind, and then he just tells me how to think about it. And it all makes sense. It's not like I just have to believe this person. It all makes perfect sense. And the way he explains it is, is uh, okay. And, and some of it, I'm not saying this, this situation with, with TKG, but... Um, some of it, you know, might have some validity, and then and then he's saying this is how you deal with that. So that way, you know, you don't have to like put your blinders on. You don't have to um, just have what is it uh, faith? What is it blind faith? You don't have to just give up your intelligence and all that. You can actually have full understanding and then full full application for the maximum result. So that's the way I do it. And I think everybody should have somebody that they can go to to get that. It's very important, I think. Is that okay? Because there are so many circumstances, like there's there's lots of stuff like that out there that, you know, I mean, did we land on the moon? Did we not land on the moon? Are those easy? There's so many, so many categories we got that people get, you know, slowed down from, and people have left the movement from. That we we don't. And if you if you hear just some, you go to somebody that's just going to give you a fanatical statement on it. That doesn't help. It doesn't solve your issue because that will only last so long. It's like the Christians going, well, I just have to believe what this says. I have to believe what, and then they continue and they still have psychological problems. And at some point, they have to resolve that. Otherwise, they continue with psychological problems. So there is, uh, my personal experience is, there's always uh, a way to resolve things. But sometimes you end up with just, well, we're just going to put that on the shelf for now. I can't answer that one. Nobody knows or whatever. And then, but your, your senior authority is saying, well, that, that's how I deal with it. And then I don't have any problems. I'm still <laughs> chanting and seeing the pastimes of Krishna. So, you know, I'm blissed out. It's not, it's not troubling me. But, you know, maybe one day, you know, uh, Krishna will reveal the answer to that. You know, and that's it's not something that we don't, is not required to attain the goal. You see my point? But anything for getting to the goal um, that all can be answered to your full satisfaction is my experience. 
I mean, Six Goswamis wrote a lot of books. Prabhupada wrote a lot of books. So, is that okay? I think everybody should have somebody like that. I can't imagine going throughout my life without somebody like that in my life because I, I, it would just keep growing. I have like 10 this year, 20 that year, 30 today. After a while, I'd just be so, it's like never cleaning out your engine or changing your, I don't know, there's just some contaminants in your vehicle. It'll just break after a while. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. This is a different question. But I've also was wondering if you can give an answer. Um, you were saying at one point that we have to like uh, serve with pure motive. So, so you're saying something like that. I didn't say that, but go ahead. You're saying something like that, or somehow I got that message. Well, the Christian said something to you that if you serve oh. without being happy, then it doesn't count. Self-satisfaction. Okay. You want to strive for self-satisfaction. So I heard this in a class by a Andrew Prabhu, and one devotee brought it up the other day that he read it somewhere. I've never read this anywhere, mm -hmm. but I don't doubt that it's true that if you offer the results of your service, or he was giving the example I Andrew Prabhu in the class, if you offer the results of your Ikadashi fast to your spiritual master, your spiritual master gets like something like a hundred times the benefit and you get like a thousand times benefit whereas you're just doing it for your own purification and you applied that to everything that like your devotional service also if you're doing it for your own purification yeah it's definitely going to work but if you offer that result to the spiritual master and uh virgin mohan prabhu and i were talking about that and i was asking well, what does that even mean and he was saying the way he read it was like okay uh, I'm chanting, and yeah, it's definitely, I know it's purifying me, but whatever purification I get, I don't care about. I'm, I want it to go to my spiritual master for his benefit. So um, I was wondering if you can talk about that. Because that, well, like, that seems like a, a real pure intention. Like well, you don't care about yourself, you're just doing it. Whatever, any benefit I get I, I really, from my spiritual I can't, I can't really relate with that, maybe because I'm not advanced enough, but, and I don't want to offend Ayn the Prabhu, but um, what I can, because I've never read it, I've never read Prabhupada says this is how you do it, but I, I've never read it in any of the Srimad Bhagavatam anywhere, or any of the books, but maybe it's there and I missed it. But what I have read is that one should serve the guru trying to bring him pleasure and um, not be concerned about your spiritual advancement yourself. In other words, uh, I mean, you care about your spiritual advancement, but this, you don't, you care about pleasing your guru over caring about your, whether you're going to make it back home or not. That's my point. You don't, you're just, your goal is to please your guru for example, a nice example of this is, is when they, they only had meat eat in Russia and the devotee said, Prabhupada, there's nothing to eat here, uh, uh, you know, it's about meat and, and what, what should we do? He says, well, we'll eat meat then. He says, well, what about our consciousness? He says, damn your consciousness, preach. So here's a nice example, at least that's the way I've been told it was done, uh, said. I didn't read that. Um, so there's a nice example that we're really, it's really about pleasing the guru. And you're not, you're not thinking, well, I, wait, wait, I can't do that because I can't do what my guru says because what happens if I don't make it to Goloka Vrindavan or whatever, you know? So this is the priority is uh, the, the proper motive operandi in the mind should be to please guru above whether you make it back home or not. Because actually by pleasing the guru, that's how we make the advancement, right? This is the, the secret to advancing Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said many different times. Th that's all I can relate with that. And I, it seems like just too much for my mind, honestly. It, it, it's, it's, I've never, look, we're just, we're Prabhupada Nugas, you know? If we go too much into something else, I think you're just going to get messed up. Really. I mean, really. You go elsewhere for your instructions. I, I just think you're going to get messed up. I've seen so many people get messed up from doing that. 
is really messed up. I mean, the whole Gopi Bob Club and so many other things come from all this stuff. Going elsewhere for instruction rather than through Prabhupada. But maybe it's on a whole nother level, yeah, this and that, but, you know, I've got to hear at least a couple of gurus talk about it before I had accepted personally. No offense to Andrew Prabhu, but, you know, that's just my stance on it. Um, you know, and he might be way up there to be able to do, think of things like that, but I'm not. Prabhupada's perfect for me. My guru is perfect for me. You know, simple as that. Um, that's my own thoughts. I hope that wasn't so lame. Of an no, answer. That was good. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, it's getting late. I've won this thing. Just in the purport, it says, one must, one must therefore take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and his associates, and should also render service to them, for that will help the neophyte attain full satisfaction. So, um, that also means like his god brothers, right? right? Basically, any Prabhupada disciples serve them and hear from them. Yeah, it could also mean senior disciples, perhaps. Associates, his I don't associates. know what associates would mean. Yeah. yeah, he's associating with, like, when Prabhupada came through here, you know, he didn't encourage people to go to his god brothers. He encouraged people to learn from his, his serious disciples, hmm. you know, senior hmm. disciples. So that could also mean that spiritual masters and associates, in other words, uh, what was his name? I forgot the new guy's name here, Dominic. You know, for him to go, oh, I ain't going to listen to you guys. I'm just going to wait for a spiritual master to come through to learn anything. You know, so Prabhupada's saying, perhaps, he's saying here, you know, you can learn from all of these disciples of a spiritual master too, you know, and, and make nice progress that way. That's recommended. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But final instruction, you know, is the guru. Okay. All right. Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai Srila Prabhupada Kijai Gaurav